In this video, we will discuss neural models for linear regression, classification, and the Fisher discriminant. As we will see, these models are closely connected to one of the earliest neural models referred to as Widrow-Hoff learning. The Widrow-Hoff learning rule was the second neural network method that followed the perceptron. The Widrow-Hoff rule is identical to linear regression when applied to numerical targets. However, originally the Widrow-Hoff rule was uh, designed for binary targets. It was proposed for binary targets. So essentially what you are doing is that you are pretending that the binary target, which are 1 or minus 1, they are numerical values. And you are simply regressing the features against these binary targets, which are treated as numerical values. Of course, treating binary targets as numerical uh, values is not natural. And as we will see, uh, this has some undesirable consequences. The Widrow-Hoff rule not only has connections to linear regression, but it is also closely connected to the, to the Fitch, Fisher's discriminant. This relationship, of course, follows from the classical relationship between linear regression and the Fisher discriminant. So here we will first discuss linear regression for numeric classes and then we will visit the case of binary classes. So let us first introduce linear regression. In linear regression, we have training pairs which are xi and yi where xi, each xi is the ith training point which is a d-dimensional feature vector and yi is a numerical target, so it can take on any real value. So we use a linear parameterized function to predict the value of yi as a dot product of a parameter vector and the ith training instance. That's how you get the prediction for the ith target value. Now this weight vector needs to be learned. And we need to learn this weight vector so that the sum of square differences between the observed yi and the predicted numerical target using the dot product between the weight vector and the feature vector is minimized when summed over the entire training data. So essentially this is a sum of square loss function. Now in the book I have also shown a closed form solution uh, to this problem uh, but that requires the inversion of a potentially large matrix. So in practice, even for linear regression, you typically use gradient descent anyway. Uh, so now we are going to discuss a neural model for linear regression, which uses a similar, actually the same gradient descent update. So here I have shown the neural model for linear regression with uh, numerical targets. The architecture, as you can see, is identical to the perceptron. Everything is exactly the same. The only difference is in the nature of the loss function. So now uh, we are using the squared loss, where we are taking the predicted value of y yi, the observed value of yi, we are squaring that. And that is your loss for a particular training instance. Uh, this is different from the perceptron criterion where uh, you were uh, defining a loss function based on the misclassification of uh, the training instance. Of course, here note that we are using numerical targets. So now, uh, based on this loss function, you can get a gradient descent update, which is essentially the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weight vector, and you will subtract that from the weight vector after multiplying with the learning rate, which is alpha. And on doing that, what you can easily show is that all you have to do is you have to multiply the difference between the observed yi and the predicted yi, multiply that by the feature vector, and then of course multiply that by the learning rate and add that to the current weight vector. This difference between yi and uh, between the observed yi and the predicted yi, when you apply it to binary targets, you get what is called the delta rule or Widrow-Hoff learning. So in Widrow-Hoff learning, what you are doing is that you are performing linear regression after pretending that the binary targets, they are real valued. So essentially, uh, you are treating it like just any other linear regression problem. It's just that the data happens to contain ones and minus ones as its target value, target numerical value. 
So again, you are going to get the identical update. If you if you're going to treat those as numerical, you're going to get identical updates. And again, you are going to be using the difference between the observed value of the target, which is either one or minus one, and the numerically predicted value of the target, which could be pretty much anything. It doesn't need to be one or minus one. Now note that this form of the update is also used in the perceptron. In fact, the perceptron has two forms of the update. One form is more similar to SVM and the other form is more similar to the delta rule. Uh, so here, we uh, let's look at the form that's more similar to the delta rule for the perceptron. If you go back to the previous slides, you will see that I have shown two forms of the update for the perceptron. So for the form of the update, which is more similar to the delta rule, there is a difference between the Widerhof learning and the perceptron. In the Widerhof uh, learning, you basically use the predicted value as the raw dot product between the weight vector and the feature vector. In the perceptron, you first take the dot product and then you use a sign function because you are implicitly recognizing that the targets are not real valued. In the case of the perceptron, you are, you are recognizing that they are binary targets. Now, this treatment of binary targets as real values by the Widerhof method does have consequences. Uh, one consequence is that there is a retrogressive treatment of well-separated points caused by the pretension that binary targets are real values. So imagine a point which is very easy to classify. What I mean by very easy to classify is that it is on the correct side of a linear separator, but it's far away from the linear separator. Uh, so, in that case, what could happen is, it, is that your dot product between a learned weight vector and your feature vector could be very large for a positive uh, class training point, which is a good thing, which, uh, which, which should be considered uh, to have no loss. But in the case of withdraw of learning, this point will be heavily penalized because you're using the raw dot product as a prediction. And when you subtract yi from the raw dot product, you will have, and you square it, you will get a very large loss. This problem does not occur in the perceptron because in the perceptron, your predicted value is a sign of the dot product between the weight vector and the feature vector. So let's really compare the Widerhof rule with the, with the other models that we have seen for so far. That's the perceptron and the SVM. So. Uh, in order to do that, we are going to convert this loss function into a form that looks a little bit more similar to what we have used in the SVM. So uh, what we're going to do is that we are going to use the fact that you have binary targets, which are either one or minus one. So since the targets are either one or minus one, when you square it, yi square will always be one. So now the loss, this yi minus uh, weight vector dot xi square, you can actually Pull out, pull out the yi square and you can write out in this form 1 minus yi multiplied w dot xi. You can already see the similarity with the SVM hinge loss because the SVM hinge loss is essentially takes the maximum of 1 minus yi w xi and 0. Now, again, you get an update which is of this form uh, w is equal to w plus yi, 1 minus yi multiplied by the dot product of w and xi, x, xi. So, again, you can see the similarity to the update for the L1 loss SVM. So, I have a table here which shows uh, all the loss functions for the perceptron for the L1 loss SVM for the Widerhof method and for Hinton's L2 loss SVM. Now note that I have not yet introduced Hinton's L2 loss SVM. All that it does is that it takes the uh, hinge loss, you know, the max of the hinge loss is zero and squares it. So here uh, you can clearly uh, see that uh, all the loss functions, they are quite similar. The L1 loss SVM is shifted from the perceptron by one unit. The Hinton's SVM just squares the L1 loss uh, SVM. And the Widerhof learning rule doesn't bother to, uh, to, to treat uh, well-separated points to, to take the max of 1 minus yi, xi, and 0, to, to treat correctly classified points properly so that they are not penalized. And similarly, the updates are also very similar. You, uh, here, I've used i as an indicator function in the update. So if you look at the perceptron update, it's the indicator whether the point is misclassified. Uh, 
and similarly uh, for the uh, l1 loss svm is the indicator whether the point is either misclassified or too close to the decision boundary so uh so so th so this is very interesting now one important point is that the l2 loss svm which i discussed in this slide i called i made it a point to call it hinton's l2 loss svm the reason for this is that this was an unrecognized point for a while and it was actually recognized only fairly recently that the l2 loss svm was first proposed by hinton in the context of a neural model in fact one of the things that was done uh, by that paper by hinton was that uh, he repaired the widerhof loss because the widerhof loss treats well separated points in a retrogressive way and what hinton did is that he set those parts of the loss to zero and what you get is identical to the l2 loss svm and and this paper by hinton uh, what is interesting this was written in 1989 where he proposed the loss function of uh, of of, L, of the l2 svm and this was proposed 3 years before cortis and wapnick's seminal paper on svms of course cortis and wapnick's wapnick's paper used l1 loss svm the hinge loss svm now uh, when this uh, approach uh, so far all the updates that i have shown i have shown them without regularization but of course you can also apply them with regularization and and that becomes identical identical to an l2 loss svm which was independently proposed much after hinton's hinton's work so this fitterhoff rule uh, it is also referred to as adaline uh, lms which is least mean square method the delta rule and least squares classification now another interesting fact about the widerhof rule is that it is closely connected to the fisher discriminant so imagine you have a binary classification problem where you have tra training pairs xi yi where each yi is drawn from minus 1 to 1 by applying some pre processing on this problem and then applying the delta rule on it you can show that what you will get is identical to the fisher discriminant so what you do is that you mean center each feature feature vector by subtracting the mean of the entire training data set from each feature vector from it similarly you mean center the binary class by subtracting the mean of the values of yi Uh, from each yi now after performing this mean center both of the target value as well as the feature vector you use the delta rule which is the widerhof rule for learning what you will get is that the learned vector is exactly the binary fisher discriminant now the proof of this result follows from the fact that the fisher discriminant can be shown to be a, a special case of linear regression and a proof of this result can be found in Christopher Bishop's book on machine learning 